got another question for you from one of our super fans, Matthew. Could Gavin create a Vice magazine today? And where are the musicians playing outdoor shows in defiance of government mandates? Uh, no, magazines are done. Print is done. The whole concept is done. And maybe, dude, maybe print, like the written word is done. You mean, I mean books, though? I like. Yeah, we all like books, but do they matter anymore? I mean, would you rather read about John Adams or would you rather watch the HBO series that shows their little buckle shoes and what kind of bric-a-brac is on the wall in the log cabin and how it was heated? I mean, you kind of get more information from video. You, this is more interesting than reading a transcription of our interview. Uh, mm. it's, it's a heady topic that requires a lot more backup, but I've been thinking about it a lot and how... You know, I used to write articles for Tacky Mag, and it would take about three days, and they'd probably reach a thousand people. And I don't know if they would have any sort of resonance or or sustainability. But when you make a video like Ten Things I Hate About Americans or Love About Americans, it gets like twenty million views, and it lasts forever. And it's a lot more dynamic to see the pictures of what you're talking about and everything. So the the days of just sitting in a hammock and looking at a magazine are long gone. That's for mostly fat chicks who want to check out celebrities because they hate their lives. Oh my God. Uh, I would never do a, a vice again. But as far as bands that are standing up to this, there's there's not a lot. I think the only dynamic musical scene these days is the Australian punk scene with bands like Emil and the Sniffers and the Chats. Uh, that's an exciting music scene. But over here, we're just cucked. Like, the, not that Mumford and Sons are an exciting alternative band, but the fact that that dude had to leave the band because he doesn't hate Andy No and Jordan Peterson shows oh, you how really? fucking gray and fascist the music scene has become. I, like, I can't tell you how many bands that I'm friends with, like um, uh, Dream Machine and uh, BBQT and uh, Ty Richards, all of these people that they didn't say they weren't, uh, liberal, they just refuse to answer the question. They're not pro-Trump per se, but they just said a few mildly controversial things and they've been totally and utterly canceled. So now when you see alternative music in America at a festival, you have to know that every single musician feels the same way as you about everything and if they don't, they wouldn't tell a living soul. That's not fun. That's not a way to live. No. When did, it, when did this happen? When did they, I mean, is it when the corporations kind of merged with the government and everything need, needed to be kind of, I don't know. When did it's all everything Trump. get so It all started with Trump. Trump showed up and he committed the sin of saying, yeah, all of your little games with like gender and bathrooms and telling me I can't see anchor babies. We're not doing that anymore. We're not playing your game. And that was unforgivable because most of America, at least half anyway, that was their education was learning all of this stupid white guilt crap and, and political correctness and all these pronoun terms. And when you take that away and says and say, not only do I disagree with it, it's meaningless, then you're taking away the left's religion. And they went crazy because they're religious Puritans and they never got over it. So that meant that you and I can't be friends with fucking libs and people are getting disinvited from Thanksgiving and all because he said, I'm not playing your game and it's time for bed, it's eight o'clock. And no, you can't have Fruit Loops right before bed. That's candy cereal. It's bad for your teeth. And they all have daddy issues. So when daddy showed up to impose some discipline, America had a meltdown. Wow. Yeah, it's true. 